Tom is in court to claim £800 for the cost to repair the sunroof on his car, which his friend damaged. Defendant Hugh says the damage was accidental, therefore he owes nothing. I have Tom here. Certainly, Dias. And is it Hugh? That's right. Now, Tom, how long have you known Hugh for? Um, 12, 15 years. Exactly so. I think um, you met in college, right? That's right. Now, I'm not so interested in what you do. What I'm interested in is what happened around December of 2017. And the two of you were on a day driving. First of all, whose car were you in, Hugh? Uh, it's Tom's car. I don't drive. Tom, when did you buy the car? Uh, so, November of that year. How much did you pay for it? I think it was 950 to be exact. But... Understood. Second-hand car? Yes. Are you a mechanic or something of that sort? I am not a mechanic, no. Do you spend your time <laughs> under bonnets? Not so much, no. Hugh, you just said to me that you don't drive, correct? So you, um, you don't just not care about cars, you give them your absolute undivided indifference, I would have thought. I uh, find it useful to be driven in a car. <laughs> yes, it is useful to be driven in a car. <laughs> Thank you. Any other truisms you'd like to share with us today? <laughs> Not Life just, is yeah. like a box of chocolates. <laughs> Purple hair bear a fruit. <laughs> <coughs> now, the thing is, you may not know about cars, but you certainly know what's sensible and not sensible, right? Usually, yes. Usually, yes. Is he a sensible person, sir? I wouldn't say that was one of the first words that sprung to mind if I was asked to describe him. Well, that's <laughs> important. Is he the type of person that might play practical jokes or be a bit silly? Yes. Give me an example of the type of silly thing he might do. I guess a similar thing that happened, uh, one of the first cars I drove, um, he, yeah, he wrote in dust on it his name across the bonnet. Um, when I came to wash it, it turned out that, of course, the dust had scratched the paint, so I was left with uh, Hugh written in large letters across the bonnet. And it, wasn't, it wasn't actually my car, it was my parents that I was uh, using. Did you want to leave a mark on Tom? Uh, it was just quite a dusty car. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. Point was, at the time, not knowing about cars, you didn't understand that there was going to be any problem with the paintwork, right? That's right. Why didn't you sue him for that back then? Um, I just don't think it occurred to me. Didn't occur to you, I would have thought, sir, because you thought, well, he didn't really know what he was doing and it was an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct? Yeah. He couldn't have known that when he wrote something in dust, it would interfere with yeah. the paintwork. Yes. For that, you'd have to have a real knowledge yeah. about cars and paintwork. I mean, I must say I was quite surprised that it left a lasting mark. I'm surprised too. <laughs> December 2017, you were driving somewhere in Wales. Now, I need you to describe to me what happened. And, Hugh, I want you to watch Tom while he's giving me his explanation, because I'm going to ask you what happened. Um, so we're driving uh, up to Manchester, um, sort of late December, and he... It's began... cold outside, I would have thought. It was, yes. Um, uh, he was fiddling around with the sunroof. Now, the fiddling. Yeah. When you ask a gentleman about whether another gentleman is fiddling and how they fiddled, <laughs> people have a different memory of how that took place. <clears throat> Sir... I need you genuinely, physically, to demonstrate to me what Hugh was doing. Um, well, he was twisting the, uh, the button back and forwards, because if you twist it one way, it'll open one way. If you twist it, it'll open the other way, and it slides back and forwards and up and down. He was then asking whether he thought it had an automatic stop on it, in the, in the way that like, lift doors or automatic doors will stop when they meet resistance, uh, and I asked him to stop mucking around with it. Um, and he said he wanted to find out if it had that feature. Why are you interested in whether your friend's sunroof had an automatic stop? Uh, I guess I just wanted an excuse to carry on um, playing, with, <laughs> playing with the controls. Why? <laughs> he was driving, I was... I didn't really have much to do, so I was... Um, <laughs> <laughs> looking for amusement, I suppose. Show me how you were fiddling. I was twisting the, twisting the dial a bit back and forth and... Because uh, it, uh, it's quite a nice mechanism and you can... Had. Sorry. Um, a nice mechanism? <laughs> Why are you interested in fiddling with people's mechanisms? 
I guess it was a sense of control because I was twisting the button and uh, <coughs> it was responding to... Um... Right, you're not an engineer or anything of that sort? Uh, no, not the moment. Uh, uh, do you aspire to be a car engineer or designer? No. No? Did he ask you to stop? Uh, yes, I believe Did so. you carry on? Uh, I don't think I carried on for long after he stopped. Well, how long did you carry on? Show me how hard you were fiddling, sir. I want to see. <laughs> well, I was... <laughs> I, I was... Uh, it was an accident. I was only... Um, were I you was... banging it? No, I wasn't banging it. I was only... Were you was... fiddling I with it very the... hard? <laughs> you carry on. I was using the knob, the, the, the dial, uh, <laughs> as, it, as it should be used. I wasn't kind of trying to lever it off or, or anything like that. I was just turning it from uh, left to right to... Uh, open and close the, um, the sunroof. Do you agree with his explanation and memory of fiddling with the knob? <laughs> uh, mostly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't be stupid. Stay and watch the best judge of moments. And I'm talking. Understood? Don't be a moron. Subscribe to Judge Rinder YouTube channel. Right now. That's an order. <laughs>